Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is another spooky Sunday video. This is probably not the best time for me to be filming because I literally had my... <sighs> Breathing isn't great right now. I had my first COVID vaccine about two hours ago and the side effects are starting to kick in a little bit, not gonna lie. If you're wondering, I had the Pfizer vaccine. It was my first one and I have my second one in September. But we're gonna try and do this video as best as I possibly can because I want it to actually be good for you. Also, I might put these fairy lights on because that might be cute. I don't know if that made that any cuter, but mm, a little bit, I guess. The background's slowly getting a little bit better. On camera right now, it looks really dark, so I'm hoping that when I edit it, it's not too dark. But anyway, I am going to get into today's video. Today's video is, a, as you know, another spooky Sunday video, and I am going to be reading your scary, spooky stories. I asked you if you had any spooky, scary stories that you wanted me to read, and then I dropped the email for you to email your stories to me. So I have three that I'm gonna read today. If you want to send me a scary story for another video let me know in the comments down below and i will give you the email that you can email them to but without further ado let's get on into today's video and read these spooky stories so i just want to say that i have not read these i was going to read them just to make sure that there's nothing inappropriate in them but then i thought it's not going to be as spooky if i pre-read them and then i read them on camera it's not going to scare me as much because i will have already known what they were about so i have not read these so we are reading these together at the same time and i'm really scared that i'm going to be spooked out. This is the first one. The subject, you know when you send an email and it has a subject, it just says scary story and it looks kind of long so I'm just going to get straight into it. So it says hey Chloe, so here we go. I hope my voice is like interesting to read stories. Oh, I didn't even think about that, like what if my voice is irritating. Oh no. Okay, anyway, it says, hey Chloe, so here we go. Back in November, I had a night terror slash astral projection project. In the dream, I was moving in with my friends and I was having fun and then all of a sudden I was back in my bed, in my house, the one I live in now, and I was asleep. I was facing my wall, so my back was facing the rest of the room. Oh, just, I don't do that. I don't do that. I can't because I feel like if my back is facing the rest of the room that something's gonna come behind me and get me or pull me out of bed or something. I do like sleeping near the wall but just so that my back be can be facing the wall and then my face faces the rest of the room so oh god I oh know this is gonna go somewhere creepy. Also I'm sorry if you can hear my neighbour's dogs there's literally nothing I can do about them. So it says I was asleep I was facing my wall so my back was facing the rest of my room as I find this the safest way to be asleep. The way I felt was weird my mind was awake and I could see my room and hear what was going on but my eyes weren't open and my body was asleep. This isn't sleep paralysis because I could still move. My room was darker though and everything was like I was underwater. I was unintentionally astral astral i'm sorry this is the word i've struggled to i'm struggling to pronounce that word astral projecting i cannot do this consciously i don't even know what an astral projection is maybe i should google that let me see what astral projection is what is astral projection astral projection is a term used in esto i don't even know how to say that word here's the word again to describe an intentional out-of-body experience that assumes the existence of a soul called an astral body that is separate from the physical body and capable of traveling outside it throughout the universe. I still don't really understand what it means but hopefully some of you guys can understand what that means. And let's continue with the story. I was just laying there and then I felt this presence. My bed dipped and made that noise it normally does and I felt this bony and cold figure lay behind me. No. <laughs> no. I hate that so much. I hate that so much. Cold and bony. Oh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I in this story? Where am I? It was basically spooning me. And it grabbed me around the waist and pulled me closer to it and whispered in my ear, I have you now. But I would straight, I'd turn around, one bomb it straight in the face. If it, was, if it was a dude, I'd kick it in the balls. I don't even know. I know it's a ghost. It probably wouldn't even hurt. It, but I'd stop beating it up. I fucking have you now. Oh, as soon as that happened, I literally screamed myself awake to snap out of it. My mom came rushing into my room as I was panicking. Since then, I have slept with a nightlight on and because I'm part of a coven, the high priestess went and did some snooping to find out what it was. And it was a dark entity that was trying to inhabit my body. It had already gained half of my soul and aura. It's all good now though. It's not there anymore. We banished a few days ago. We had to bring in more witches and a lot of energy, even 
even the older and wiser witches were terrified. The entity had become that powerful that whoever I got in contact with in person it would appear to them as well and physically hurt them. Black salt and mugwort is still on threshold of my room. I hope you enjoyed my spooky story slash experience Bella. I mean I enjoyed it. It was an interesting read and I'm glad you're alive and okay but what the frick? A cold bony figure. I'm so glad you have witches and people in your life that were able to help you banish it because I wouldn't know what the hell to do. I'd Because uh, I guess sometimes with ghosts things like that you can't even move house because if they attach them to your soul they'll just follow you to a different house won't they? So it's like even if I had left the house it would still come. So I would not know what to do so I'm glad you had people there to help you get rid of it but that is my worst nightmare. I also sleep with fairy lights on. I just don't like the dark. I don't know if anybody else gets this but the dark reminds me of being dead. I don't know if that's a little bit too deep but I've never been able to sleep completely in blackness. There has to be even just a, even just a tiny light. Nothing bright just a tiny light because the dark blackness reminds me of being dead and I don't like that so I can't sleep in the dock. But anyway, moving on to the next story. The subject of this one says scary stuff. So it says, hey Clo, I'm Steph and this is a bit of a long story. Sorry, you don't need to apologise. We love any length of story here and it all happened last summer. So it's August 2020 and me and my friend Mikey meet up for the first time in ages. We decided to go to a forest to just take a little look at the area and it was actually pretty sick. Oh but the forest, forest give me bad vibes. So fast forward a few weeks we go to explore the forest and as soon as we get there the vibes are just off. We're filming a YouTube video and we start exploring. Nothing happens for the first bit but then we get deeper in and I, I swear to god I see a figure in black walking around and I'm like yo guys stop there's someone up there and we all stop and listen I'm laughing because that is literally me if I saw a ghost I'd be like yo guys stop man stop we need to get out I'd be like freaking out like yeah literally me we are the same people all of us can legit hear footsteps we ask about if anyone's actually there and there's no reply but then we see someone duck behind a bush and we can clearly see someone behind it so we run up and literally no one is there I mean, if it was just you that saw someone duck behind the bush, you can kind of explain it away. But when there's multiple people that have seen someone duck behind a bush and then you go and they're not there, it's like you literally can't explain that away. So all through that day, we were just hearing noises. Then we end up splitting up and our friend Mikey plays a prank on us by smashing a piece of wood in a four beat rhythm. A while later, we're all back together again and in the same forest, someone else is doing exactly the same thing. Long story short, there was a figure and noises. Then a few more weeks later, we return. We're dumb as fuck. <laughs> same. It's like in the horror movie when you say, why are you gonna go and look down there? But you know when you hear a noise, you always go and look down there as well. Probably curiosity got the better of you, I reckon. And this time, we kind of hear more of the same thing. But this time, we literally hear growling with our own ears and it's like the main thing that happened. Growling. Demonic. Demonic. We go through our footage and we hear one voice and it's like, you'll die. And that's pretty mad. Pretty mad. If I heard growling and someone said, you're gonna die, I would... It's more than pretty mad. This was the maddest experience so far. So this is a few months later and this time we're shooting a short film. I'm framing the shot and there's a man in the black suit. I'm saying, yo, excuse me, could you please just wait a moment? We're filming a scene. And then Mikey turns to me and is like, no one is there. So I'm like, bro, you're joking. He's right there. I hope you like the little commentary that I'm doing, the little acting voices. <laughs> and he's telling me he isn't. So he goes and walks right up to where he is and he's literally in his personal space. Like if he really was there, he should have been so annoyed that someone has invaded his personal space, but he isn't. I run up and he's gone. Instead, there's this massive cold spot just chilling and Mikey says, we're here just to film a short film. Sorry about invading your personal space. And I kid you not, the cold spot begins moving away. At least you were nice. I bet that ghost was like, you know what, I respect you. Or the demon, I don't know what it is. Creepy ghost man, demon man. He's like, you know what, I respect you, bro. Thanks for moving out my personal space. <laughs> and then it says, and the final part is we didn't overnight there. You're telling me. You've been to this place like three times. And each time you've been, it has been spooky dooky creepy AF. And your thought process was, you know what, well, let's sleep here. Let's sleep here. No. 
not for me. And the whole time we have a feeling someone's following us. We're hearing chains, footsteps and everything. We get to this abandoned bridge and then boom, we see a man running away from us. We have no clue what's going on so we stay put. Then some police officers come down and tell us there was a man with a machete in the forest and we had to be escorted out of the forest which is mad. Anyways, that's my story. Sorry it was all a little long. Steph, the house of banter. But do you have this video on your YouTube channel? Because you're saying that you filmed it for YouTube and stuff. If you watch this video and I hope you do watch this video, do you have this video on your YouTube channel? If yes, link. can you link it? Can you comment a link of it please? And I will try and put it in the description so everyone can watch. But like the first few times were like fun, not fun and games, but you know, it's paranormal so you can kind of escape it a little bit better. But when it's a whole ass man with a whole ass machete that is terrifying like you could have been murdered that night i saw someone said before i don't know where i've seen it but someone was like you need to be scared of the people you can see not the people you can't see basically saying that you should be scared of humans and not ghosts because humans can do more harm and like the first bit of the story was like it wasn't funny because it was scary but you know it was like laughing a joke and i love the commentary and the talking and stuff but then a dude with a machete and you had to be escorted with police officers that would scar me please don't go back to the forest it ain't got good vibes okay so the last story that i'm gonna read today the subject says spooky story hey i have a story about my grandma and my aunt it's always freaked me out my mom told me about this Ooh. so we have like I don't know if you can see but we have little headers and little titles and stuff so this title says moving to Africa so my grandma was an immigrant and she moved to France with my granddad she had six kids and since she moved to a new country she wasn't familiar with she sent my mom and her older brother to live with her mother back in Africa so that she can get settled in with a steady income and a house before bringing them back the next title says living in Africa whilst my mom was in Africa she split her time between living in the city and in the villages. So sometimes she would stay in the city with her aunts and cousins for a few months and then she would go to live in the village and live there for a few months but she considered both her home. Next title says backstory explanation. Since we're Muslims we pray five times a day however in my culture we believe that during the fourth time to pray whilst the sun is setting that is when demons and spirits come out. So we believe that it is very dangerous to leave your house especially if you live in the villages as we are in very close proximity to the woods and that's where they like to congregate. In my religion it is believed that there are good and bad spirits like there are people and these are called jinn. I hope I've said that right. I'm going to put the word on the screen. Let me know if I've said that wrong and I apologise if I have said that wrong. You can't see them but they are there and have the ability to take the form of people you know. Oh that's kind of like the video I did with the blah blahs. I'm not gonna say the word i'll put the word on screen the video i did for them they can change into people you know and animals and stuff can't they um anyway it says so they usually do this to kids by taking on the form of their parents and luring them they then offer them food and if the child eats the food they will never be found again and if the child doesn't then they are, are returned safely i'm skeptical about the last part after the dashes oh it spooked me out okay so this title says spooky event my aunt and then it says brackets my mom's cousin will call her neura i'm so sorry about the dogs Nura I hope I'm saying that right. It's N-U-R-I-A. Was throwing out the trash. The village is very small with around 20 to 30 houses only. So there is one area in which everyone throws their rubbish, which is on the outskirts of the village, but very close to the woods. She threw out all of the trash around the time the sun was setting. My mom's grandma, we'll call her Olivia, was waiting for Nura to come back so they could pray together. But after 10 minutes, she started getting worried about Nura since she shouldn't take that long to throw the bins out and started looking for her. She looked around the house but could not find her. She even went around the village looking for her and by now it's been a few hours but she still hasn't shown up. Everyone was really worried about Nura since it wasn't uncommon for coyotes to come near the rubbish dump looking for food. After a while people were still looking and my mom was also looking for her when she went to my grandma's room and checked under the bed. There she found my aunt Nura hiding under the bed crying. According to my aunt she went to throw out the rubbish when she saw my grandma near the woods with another family member calling for her. Oh my my aunt said that all she remembers is following them and nothing after that except for my mom finding her. It's believed that the spirits took on the form of my grandma to attract but she didn't eat their food so they had brought her back. To this day my aunt doesn't really talk to people. She's social but very introverted and prefers to keep to herself. It's almost like an unspoken thing that we don't talk about what happened to her and to be honest I'm kind of scared of her. The names I used on the story aren't real since they are very private people but my name is Aisha and 
I currently live in the UK with my parents. I said Aisha, I'm gonna say it's Aisha or Aisha, but thank you for your story. That is so creepy. Um, them dogs are stressing me out. It reminds me of the blah blahs, put the word on screen, because like I said, apparently if you say the word, it attracts them and I don't want to attract them, but it reminds me of them. That is so spooky that it happened to your aunt as well. I'm so glad that she returned home safely. I wonder if she was told about them growing up and that's why she didn't eat the food, but then like you said, she doesn't remember being asked to eat the food, so I don't know. It's spooky. Thank you everybody that sent me a story. I really like reading them and hearing about your experiences and I also like just I like having conversations with you and contact with you because I feel like YouTube when you film a YouTube video you just sat here talking to a camera and I miss the interaction I wish I was braver then I would do live streams but I get scared that I'm boring and that I wouldn't know what to do and and you would leave because you get bored so if you have any ideas for live streams let me know and I'll think about doing one either here or TikTok or Instagram because I just I don't know I just really like talking to you and I feel like reading these stories is a way to communicate with each other but yeah thank you sending your stories and i hope you like the video if you did please remember to smash a massive thumbs up and remember to subscribe and until next time i will see you guys soon peace